Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya, if you're new here. And today I'm going to be doing another episode of my coloring updates. So I hope you enjoy the episode and let's get into it. First order of business is I received this really, really awesome happy mail from a subscriber, Beth. She said I could say her name. Thank you so much, Beth, for the happy mail. It is so, so sweet of you. And she sent me um, uh, a notebook here, which is actually really cool. You can draw something and then write. Um, she wrote me a wonderful little card and... She sent me, she knows I, she said um, she wanted to send me some mushroom stamps because she knows I like mushrooms. So she sent me these mushroom stamps, which are really, really awesome. And I think this is like moss. So I will try to use this somewhere on a page. That should be really cool. And then she also sent me a bunch of other uh, stamps, which is great. This one's good for birthday. I need to make some more birthday cards. I'm almost running out. I used to do a lot of card making, so I do have the uh, acrylic blocks that you need for stamping. And um, I haven't done it in a while, but she did send me a bunch of awesome stamps. So, oh, this one's really cute. Is that surfing? Oh, this is like Hawaii. Um, so Beth, thank you so much for all these really, really cute stamps. I appreciate it so, so much. So sweet of you. And big shout out to you. Good. And I recently got the Mangio Aquarelle Oil Pastel. These are water-soluble oil pastels, and I got the pearl. Now, I do want the Sennelier iridescent ones, but these are really, really cheap, and they're water-soluble, and I always wanted to try them. I saw them on Indrani's channel, Indrani the Colorista, I think it's called. So I will link her channel below anyway, because I talked about her in the other clip, but... um. I have been playing around with these. You can see they're kind of pearlish. I hope you can kind of see. So my idea was to um, use these in the Maria Troll, um, you know, the black backgrounds. I've been wanting to play around with my iridescent paints and other things. So I will, I might take you along with that. I don't know if it'll be in this video or in another video, but... Um, I just wanted to update you on that, and I will let you know how it goes. So far, they seem great, and the price is so cheap. So um, I will keep you posted on how that goes. Okay, so I decided to take you along with me while I experiment a little bit in here. Whoops. Sorry about that. Yeah, I decided to take you along with me while I experiment in here with these. Um, this is Luna by Maria Troll, and I found a, a nice background that I like. So let me see, what color should I use? Hmm, I really like this one. This, this one looks kind of sparkly and pretty. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I brought, I brought up some water brushes here. So I hope you can appreciate that these are a little bit pearlescent. I hope you can see that metallic, pearlescent, whatever you want to call it. And let's see what happens. They're supposedly water soluble. Well, they are. I tested them out and they are water soluble. I did do a shorts video about it. I don't know if you saw when I was playing with them. Um... I got them right before I went on my trip, so I didn't have that much time to play around with them. But uh, let's see. Now, I think it would be nice to add some glitter to this and iridescent paint. I have some iridescent acrylic paint, so let's see what we can do. I'm going to take my watercolor brush here and... So I'm just speeding you up for this part where I'm just trying to kind of move them around with water. And I'm noticing how they work on the black background. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and then I will bring in some glitter and um, iridescent paint. 
Actually, I, you know what? I might do all four sides and then come back. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> I need to show this to you guys. So these I activated with the water and moved it around because they're water-soluble oil pastels. But then while I was laying this down, I noticed that the pearl color kind of stays a little bit more intense when you just rub with your finger. And it's easier to rub with, it's easier to kind of like rub with your finger than with a water. I mean, with a regular oil pastel, it's harder, but these are very, very soft. Maybe that's why they're water soluble, like water soluble, but I feel like it looks almost better with just rubbing it with my hand. But I already did this with, I activated it with water. So what I'm gonna do is, I will go over this a little bit with pastel again and then, um, which side do you think looks better? Hold on, let me go out a little bit. Huh, it's a tough call. But um, look at that, just with my finger, I feel like it looks a little bit more metallic. So I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, it, it looks more pearl, definitely. I don't have any pearl oil pastels. Wow, they look ray really dry without activating them, huh? So maybe I should go over this with a little bit of oil pastel more and then just with my finger. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Let me add a little bit more. Again, just speeding you up a little bit here while I add a little bit more on top and rub it with my finger. Hmm. I don't know if you could see, but it looks very metallic to me over here. Go. Let me go out a little bit. Yeah, you can you can see that. Yeah, you can see how it's like metallic. So I'm liking that. I think I'm gonna go over that. We'll go over that and come back. Okay, I am getting so excited. I cleaned my fingers. So I took out my some some glitter colors. Um, that I have glitter uh, acrylic glitter colors. I got this cheap one too, which is goldish. And then I have one flash iridescent because I do want to fix this a little bit. Yeah, it needs to be fixed. So I'm taking out just a cheapo brush. Please don't use good brushes on your acrylics because they will get ruined. <laughs> uh, do, definitely never use your watercolor brushes like ever on acrylics. But anyway, so I'm just I just open it and I and I take it from the cap because I can't be bothered. But um, let me do a little bit of fixing here with the iridescent paint. It will kind of fix the um, oil pastel a bit, and then we'll do some glitter on top. Just going to do a really light, quick kind of fix of this. And take a little bit of this. These kind of dry over time and become like a paste. Let's take a little bit of the gold. Okay, I'm taking a little bit of the gold. Okay, so I'll add a little bit more and then I will come back. Okay, so it's still drying, but um, I want you to see how fun that is with the glitter. Um, I really like it because these kind of black backgrounds, I'm not a huge fan. It's a little too plain for me. So this is going to be fun. This is going to be a lot of fun. I think I'm going to go have to do a bunch of backgrounds now with this on, on the Maria Troll books. <laughs> and try different things with different colors. But I really love how that came out. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed that little experimenting and I'll keep you posted on how this goes in my other pages. So we'll see, I'm gonna do more experimenting and I'll update you. I don't know if my haul came out before this video or is gonna come out after, I'm not sure, cause I film, I kind of batch film, but I did not include this in my haul and I did, I just got it yesterday. Um, for the fabric castell I did end up getting the skin tone as well. I saw it on, uh, what's it? Who did I see? Maybe Bo Beanie Creates on Jeannie's channel. And I had already gotten the pastel set and the 
50 cent, which was on sale. I put it in my community tab. But um, I missed this set, the skin tone. It was also really cheap. I think it was like $6, so it was worth it to get it. There's 12 pencils. The neon and the pastel together also was $6, 12 pencils. So it was worth it. Um, they were on sale. So I'm going to add that to my collection and swatch them out. Okay, so another thing that is going on here on my craft desk, something that I'm working on, I wanted to show you guys is, hold on, let me get the front. This is called the Painter's Color Diary. Um, and it is 100% cotton watercolor paper. And they, there is glassine paper between each um, swatch. And these pages are removable. So you could kind of pop them in and take them out. And this is watercolor paper. So what I'm working on here, and I just got this from Amazon. It was on sale. Um, and the reason that I got it, it was on sale. And I also, uh, so there's 10, 10 sheets. I wish there was more, but this one is like travel. So maybe that's why it's less. But anyway, the reason that I got this is because uh, for my water-soluble media, I wanted to keep all the swatches in one place, like ink tents, watercolor pencils, nail color too, and maybe some watercolors and stuff like that. So um, the reason is, is that I am using my Super Color Soft, my Caran d'Ache Super Color Soft Aquarels a lot lately in my Japanese books. And um, if my haul didn't come out yet, I did get a uh, I did put an order in for my birthday from Amazon Japan. So because I'm using these a lot more and I have been lazy about swatching. So I created this swatch a long time ago. When I added new colors, I didn't have room. So I made smaller circles and kind of added them in. But the problem is I was getting confused with this because that I also use these pencils dry. And the way that I swatched them, I completely activated it and... Um, it just wasn't working for me. This swatch sheet, I wasn't able to see what I wanted to see and I'm not able to pick the right colors. Now, I don't like swatching. I'm not one of those colorists who love swatching. And I know a lot of people love swatching. I don't like it. It's a chore. I'd rather color. Um, but I have to, you know, it's something that you have to do if you want to bring your coloring to the next level and to really create a beautiful, beautiful page artistically, you really do need to swatch your supplies. Um, if you're just coloring for relaxation and you don't care, obviously you don't need to. But if you're doing it for artistic reasons, yeah, you, knew, you do need to swatch your supplies. And this wasn't working anymore. I needed a better swatch situation because I was getting confused with the greens and the browns and I wasn't using them to their full potential. So... As you can see in this um, swatch sheet, they have, first of all, the paper is incredible. It's watercolor paper. So there's a section for to, to swatch it dry and then a section to activate it and kind of fade it out. So you can see, um, you can see the pencil in three different ways. You know what I mean? And that's what I needed because I do use these pencils dry as well. They're amazing. But the color is different. And as much as the color on the barrel is nice, Karen Dash does do a nice job of trying to match the paint on the pencil to the actual color. It's not 100%, no matter what, you know. It's just not 100%. So um, I am working on swatching. And um, I'm going to show you how I'm doing one, one of the colors. So this is Beaster. This is my my last brown. I re it was really important to me to swatch out my greens, my earthy greens, my browns, and my blues because I was getting confused with the blues. Um, I wasn't knowing which color I wanted, it, which to pick. My swatches wasn't working, so I really need to. to I really want to swatch out the blues, so I'm not confused and I know what color I'm picking, and it, it'll just. It won't slow me down in my coloring. So let me show you what I'm doing. I am first swatching it just um, dry. And because it's watercolor paper, there will be light, like white underneath, but that's okay. 
And then I'm doing another one here like this, dark with a lot of pigment and fading out a little bit like this. Then I am making sure my brush is clean so it's not contaminated from previous colors. And I'm not swooshing it all the way, I'm just laying down the water. And then I will take a little bit like and take it to the edge there. Um, but that is how I'm swatching it and I can see the color in three different ways, how it, how it could work for me. So that is what I'm doing now. That's a project that I am working on with my super color softs. And I do want to do my ink tents and I think even my, uh, my graphitin. So it's going to take a while. It's unfortunate because it is a chore. I don't like swatching, but I know it will help me in the long run. So it's something that I am working on. Um, and, you know, it is relaxing. I mean, it's not horrible, but I'd rather color, to be honest. <laughs> but that is a project I'm working on, so I wanted to show that to you guys. So I uh, did end up filling up quite a bit of it. I did my super colors, the Karen Dash super colors. Um, like that, and I love how the swatches came out. Much better now. Uh, I, I did my ink tents. Um, I did the graphite tint, uh, down here, this is the graphite tint, this is the rest of the ink tents, because I keep them together, and I did my Neo Color 2s, which I have never done, I don't think I've, maybe I did it when I had like a small set, but a small collection, I should say, I never got a set, but, um, yeah, I finally did my Neo Color 2s, so I do have some... I do have two pages left. I might get another one. And I'm thinking to do some of my watercolors in here. We'll see. So um, I wanted to show you that. And it's been really, really helpful. I think I'm going to get another one of the travel. And um, yeah, I really like it. I might. I also have this, uh, which is a watercolor sketchbook. And I might uh, do my watercolor swatches in here. I already did a couple. Um, I did my Rosa watercolors in here, and I ended up never using it as a sketchbook. <laughs> I started, but never did that um, because I just found coloring, and I enjoy coloring better than sketching my own stuff in, and then coloring it in. Um, so I think I might use this also for my watercolor, watercolor swatches. So we'll see. It's either that or um, this one. So a couple of episodes ago, I showed you that I gave this book. I had another copy from a thrift store, a used book. I gave it to my dad and I showed you that he was coloring this page. Um, he chose this one when I was visiting and I, I let him use my Brute Funer pencils. He also has one set of Prima watercolors that I recommended to him and he really, really likes. So he's been doing watercolor sketches lately, but... Uh, you guys asked to see his completed page, so I actually had him take a photo and send it to me, so I'm going to show it to you guys right here. So this is my dad's completed page. I think he did an amazing job. I love how he used a little bit of watercolor there in the background, and the rest, I believe, is mostly pencils. I think he may have used a little bit more watercolor here and there, but I think it's mostly pencils, and... Um, if for those of you that don't know, my dad is an artist. He was an art teacher for a long time. Now he's kind of like semi-retired. And he colored this when I was visiting in Thanksgiving of last year. And I took, I kind of like took photos of him and put it in my coloring update at the time. And yeah, I love how his page came out. This is a page that I showed you guys a while ago that I completed in here. But maybe I will do that same page that my dad did as like a buddy color <laughs> after the fact. Um, and that is Landmarks of the World by Abby Daker. A couple of more updates I have for you that's been going on here is that I've got this file folder uh, thing uh, from Daiso. They had it in white and in blue. I decided to get white to match my craft room. But I have been, it's like a, it has these clear pockets that you could put papers in. So I've been uh, using it to put my swatches for my alcohol markers. This is the Ohuhu. Uh, this is a Ohuhu Ohu Honolulu uh, 120 set that they sent me. Um, 
this is the Artex pencils. This is my Luminance collection. I don't have all the colors. Um, this is my Pablo collection so far. I only use them to supplement my uh, Polychromos. So um, here are my Calero. So I have been using it to kind of as a swatch uh, book. These are the chalk pastels from Neoni that Lightwear sent me. This is the uh, Crayola Super Tips. So um, I need to print out more of these. I might get another one of these and split it up into two different uh, books, but wanted to show that to you. It's great, I love it. Okay, so a bit of a story time hour here. <laughs> uh, I found a channel recently, I believe it's called Alchemy of Color. And um, wow, she is amazing, so talented. And I wish I had found her channel earlier, but I just found it. You know how like YouTube suggests different channels to you? So now she, uh, on one of her videos, she did an oil pastel background using Q-tips. She did use these, she has these. She used Q-tips. Now I know a lot of you guys don't like to use your finger. I like to use my finger, but I thought I would try her method uh, it's a little bit different than in Indrani. Remember when I told you guys um, that I saw Indrani using, uh, she got me to use oil pastels because she was using it with a Q-tip in a different way. Uh, I'll leave her channel below. She's a wonderful colorist as well. And But this is a little different what, what uh, this channel did, Alchemy of Color. She Her technique was to lay down a lot, a first layer of like a lot, a lot, a lot of oil pastel. And then it's easier to kind of blend it out with a Q-tip. Um, a Q-tip, for those of you in Europe, is an earbud. I think you guys called it earbuds. Here in the United States, we call it Q-tips. So that was her technique. And I thought, you know what, let me try it out because I know a lot of you guys don't like to use your finger. And maybe I could um, show you guys, you know. So I'm gonna leave her the, the video that I saw below. She does it amazingly. Um, so you should definitely check out her color along. I will leave it below, but, um, I thought I would give it a shot. So I took out my, uh, Denise Klepp books and I decided to try, um, oh, actually it's not this one. It's the, the fairies one. Cause they, a lot of these books have, um, there's some good backgrounds in them. So I thought, you know what, let me test out her method in one of these books. So I'll, I'm going to bring you along. Okay, so um, I am working in Denise Klett's Birds in the Forest, and I already laid down all of the oil pastel. And what I'm showing you here is me trying to blend it out with a Q-tip. And um, it was working okay. Uh, it wasn't my favorite, so I kind of stopped and I ended up using my finger. <laughs> Um, but I did try it again in another book with a Q-tip with the earbud. But right here, um, I did lay down a lot of oil pastel, <clears throat> um, which is important in either technique, but especially with the Q-tip. And uh, all I did was cut, you could see the colors that I laid down, is to create like a glow, um, glow-like type of effect around the moon in the night sky. Um, so, and then I will fix it with satin glazing liquid, but this is just me. I kind of gave up with the Q-tip. So I did want to show you, I did want to show you that part, <laughs> the process. Like that's how it is when you experiment, like you try different things. It does work. It doesn't. So with this page, I gave up, but I did try it again in this page. And this is from, uh, Fairies in Dreamland, also by Denise Klett. And here I am showing you how much, uh, you know, oil pastel I'm laying down. So um, I did lay down quite a bit and I'm kind of doing like an orange gradient uh, with a little bit of peach there. So like a pinky, peachy, yellow gradient. And um, yeah, I'm showing you right here that I it did work out with the Q-tip. You just have to lay down a lot and be persistent and so like I said, this is a technique that I kind of saw on um, Alchemy of Color. So uh, I'm adding a little bit of darkness there to the bottom. And um, yeah, I'm using the Q-tip again. I think I changed Q-tips. The one I was using originally was a little bit of a cheap one from the 99 cent store. So 
I ended up getting a Q-tip that was <clears throat> a higher quality one uh, for like makeup, like makeup Q-tips that I never used for like eyeshadow. And that has like a nice flat edge and that worked better for me. So um, I might try this again in the future. I'm not sure. I still like the finger better personally, but even with this technique, by the way, you will get your fingers dirty. So if you don't like that, um, I don't know, maybe it's just me that I always get dirty, but it, I feel like you can still get a little bit dirty with this technique. Uh, then I fixed it with satin glazing liquid, which I did not show. And now I am kind of cleaning up around the fairy with Prismacolors. So that is the final result. I did show this on my completed pages for June, if you didn't see that video. Um, and I will show you how the fairies came out in a minute. So this is how it came out. Um, I think it came out great. Once I color this, I'm going to use alcohol markers for the actual fairy. I might do an, something else here, maybe bubbles or I don't know. But I want to show you, this is what I use, makeup applicators. I've had these forever and I never use them for like makeup. Kind of get one out of here. So it's kind of like a fancy Q-tip, but this it's flat has this flat edge here and then a smaller edge here. So I feel like it's good for um, or this technique of oil pastel. Um, maybe I need to add a little bit more oil. I think the more you add, the better. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really good technique. I think I will use it more and kind of get better at it. Um, but. Yeah, her video is amazing. Definitely check it out. I'm going to link it below. Um, I am in Beautiful Birds and Tree Chop, uh, Tree Top Treasures. I actually got this as a used book. And this is an old page that I had based with some watercolors. And now I'm going on top with Polychromos. I like to use Polychromos on top of watercolor base. And um, I'm showing you this page just because um, I wanted to say that, wanted to tell you guys that um, you have to embrace like the ugly phase. You know what I mean? Um, if you're not completing pages, a lot of you tell me that you, you have a hard time completing pages. Um, I think one of the hardships is embracing the ugly phase, like letting there be an ugly phase and just working on it a little bit. And then when you're sick of it, put it away, work on it again. Um, so um, that is what, what I kind of wanted to mention to you here is that everyone has an ugly face to their page um, because unless you're one of those people that works on one area a lot before basing everything else, like you finish an area. I don't work like that. So I like to base everything while I have it, you know, and then go back in. But, you know, when you do that, there is an ugly phase, and sometimes that can put you off to completing a page, but try not to let that, you know, just embrace it. Be like, yes, ugly phase is good, because that means that I am starting a page, and I'm gonna work on it slowly, add shading, cover the lines, whatever it is to make it look slowly better and, you know, improve it with time so that is all I wanted to tell you guys in this little clip so that is all I have for you today in today's episode I hope you enjoyed the video <clears throat> I hope you found it fun and interesting and hopefully inspiring to kind of um, maybe experiment experiment a little bit more with our uh, supplies Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for all your kind comments. I appreciate them so, so much. Have a wonderful coloring month, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, everyone.